the mighty Martin Mars. There are two of them, two Martin Mars water bombers, the largest operational flying boats ever built and the last on the planet. They are based in the Pacific Northwest and they fight fires. All day long, these giant Mars water bombers were trying to keep up with fires breaking out all over the province. This fire near Daisy Lake on the road to Whistler started this morning, one of 92 that have broken out in the last couple of days. Each aircraft with its 200-foot wingspan is capable of dropping over 7,200 U.S. gallons on a pass. That's the equivalent of 27,000 liters. Four acres drenched at a single drop. With the two aircraft working in tandem, our quickest turnaround time was one drop every seven minutes. For maximum versatility, the Mars offers three firefighting options. With the push of a button, the flight crew can switch between straight water, or foam for improved penetration, or thermogel, which is a fire suppressant that provides longer lasting coverage. The choice is yours. Stalwarts of the U.S. Navy in their earlier life, they've been operating as air tankers since 1960. Hawaii Mars and Philippines Mars are ideally suited to their new vocation. These aircraft are kept in a constant state of readiness and once dispatched, can cruise at 200 miles per hour to the fire. Once there, the desirable drop height is 150 to 200 feet. The volume dropped is awesome. 60,000 pounds of water. That's 30 tons. Nothing else can deliver that much water that fast, right where it is needed. The two aircraft and their crews work as a team with a bird dog aircraft. The bird dog arrives at the fire first. The pilot establishes contact with the incident commander, surveys the fire, arrives at a joint attack strategy with the ground crews, and relays details back to the incoming water bombers. The bird dog pilot knows intimately the capabilities of the Mars aircraft. This knowledge is essential in planning their firefighting strategies. By the time the water bombers arrive on the scene, they have information on the fire, wind velocity, the most effective and safest approach path, suitable water sources, and the location of ground crews. They're ready to go to work. Water is lifted from any suitable fresh or salt water source. The Mars fly in, touch down lightly on the water, and lower their two six-inch diameter scoops. The actual pickup takes about 25 seconds as the water is driven into the tanks at terrific force by the speed of the aircraft across the water. Scooping distance is less than a mile and a half. Depending on the local topography, a three to five mile lake is an adequate water source. Then the Leviathans gather speed for takeoff again and head to the fire. Internally fitted tanks enable the crew to custom mix the foam concentrate while flying back to the drop site. A standard mix is 0.4% concentrate, but this can be adjusted to create a lighter or heavier foam concentration as requested by the incident commander on the ground. Each aircraft can provide a variety of drop options with their multiple doors. Flying Tankers Inc. is based on Sprode Lake in central Vancouver Island. They can operate directly from this base or they can pack up their portable support equipment and operate from any suitable location. All necessary equipment for detached operations can be loaded into the aircraft within three hours and transported to a fire location where a base will be set up for short or long-term operations. Barricades and personnel are deployed to ensure the refueling site is run safely with environmental and operational effectiveness. Okay, everything looks good here. Um, maybe I'll just check your manifest. To... With internationally verified ISO 14001 environmental certification, Flying Tankers Inc. has developed environmentally sound procedures for refueling the aircraft at any location these flying boats can land and anchor. The floating refueling hose is pulled to the plane with a boat. We come around your port side pretty quick. There is 500 feet of line available should that length be required. Okay, Juan, we're uh, about ready to start pumping up here. I'll just check with Ty, make things, make sure things are okay. Okay, when you're set. Okay, Ty. During the fuel pumping procedure, the crew patrols the length of the refueling hose. They check for problems, as well as warning away boaters should they venture too close. For nighttime refueling, flashing lights are attached to the hose. Being able to refuel and carry out maintenance at detached locations has greatly increased the capability of the flying tankers. Just as when operating from the Sprout Lake base, after an only an hour's pause, the aircraft can be ready to fly again. 
The aircraft are operational in daylight hours, traditionally April through to November of each year. They are kept in a constant state of readiness by a dedicated crew of maintenance engineers. A flight crew consists of captain, first officer, and two flight engineers. It takes the coordinated effort of all four to fly the aircraft. During times of forest fire hazard, the aircraft can be underway within 10 minutes. There are always two crews and aircraft on standby. Rapid response can make a huge difference to the containment of a fire, especially with high winds or extreme fire behavior conditions. These aircraft are equipped with state-of-the-art communications equipment, including FM radios, satellite telephones, as well as GPS tracking systems. As soon as fire season is over, the aircraft are hauled out of the lake and subjected to a rigorous maintenance regime, which lasts throughout the winter. Every inch of each aircraft is minutely inspected and refurbished or upgraded. Those parts which cannot be purchased are fabricated in the company's own extensive workshops. When originally purchased, the aircraft came equipped with a complete spare parts inventory. Eight spare engines are kept on site in pressure-sealed containers. Outside experts are brought in to work with the flying tanker staff to ensure complete compliance with all airworthiness standards. Since the late 1990s, flying tankers has led the way in the industry in the use of strain gauge and G-load monitoring equipment, ensuring the integrity of these aircraft. Since their introduction to the firefighting scene in British Columbia in 1960, flying tankers have made a significant difference. The quick response capabilities of these aircraft and the total drenching effect of the drops they make means that fires are hit hard, early, before they can spread. This airborne approach to firefighting means that fires can be fought far from road access, on steep grades and in mountain valleys. With the rugged, isolated terrain of much of the forested areas of North America, these advantages are paramount in protecting the forests, the lives of firefighters and the forest resources, and the communities that can be affected by fire. With their ability to drench four acres at a drop, to deliver the water exactly where it is needed, and their ability to keep on doing that for hours at a stretch, they are a cost-effective weapon for a land manager's firefighting arsenal. The Martin Mars Water Bomber Teams are ready to assist you. Flying tankers are champions of volume per hour with the mighty Martin.